What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and a look at the Emerald City, Seattle, Washington. Seattle carries a couple other nicknames like the Jet City and the Rain City. The Rain City is obvious because it rains here a whole bunch and Jet City is because of Boeing and the influence of the aviation industry over the years in Seattle. Seattle residents are known as Seattleites. Seattle is located in the northwest part of the United States and is the largest city in both the state of Washington and the Pacific Northwest. It's been known as one of the fastest growing big cities in the United States. Seattle, like so many other overpriced big cities, has a large homeless population. Now, this is what's weird. I've been to Seattle five different times since the pandemic started, and I haven't seen it as bad a situation as Los Angeles, Portland, and San Francisco. I've been to all of those cities, and Seattle is bad, don't get me wrong. It's just it's not in your face like you get in San Francisco, Portland, and Los Angeles. So it's appearance. I don't know what it is. I go there and I see the homeless, but they don't have 20 tents on a sidewalk every other block. You know, it's just not that bad. But appearances can be deceiving because the stats say it is. The numbers show that Seattle's in the top five per capita with homeless. Seattle, with all its problems, is still a great city with Elliott Bay, Space Needle, Pike Place Market, and Seattle Center. Definitely worth a visit and maybe even move there if you can afford it. All right, let's see what's up with Seattle, Washington. Seattle was inhabited by Native Americans for at least 4,000 years before the first European settlers showed up. That first European settler was George Vancouver, and he showed up in May of 1792 during his 1791 to 1795 expedition for the Royal Navy. He was out to chart the Pacific Northwest. In 1851, a large party of American pioneers led by Luther Collins made it to the mouth of the Duwamish River, and they formally claimed the area on September 14th, 1851. Now, the Duwamish River starts near Tukwila, where the Black River and the Green River meet, and it empties out into Elliott Bay. But George Vancouver and Luther Collins and his group, they're not credited with the founding of Seattle. Arthur A. Denny and his group of travelers are credited with the founding. They settled at Alki Point on November 13, 1851. They eventually moved on to the eastern shore and named it Seattle in 1852 after the local Duwamish chief, Chief Shial, also known as Chief Seattle. Seattle went on to be incorporated into a town on January 14th, 1865, and it was incorporated into a city on December 2nd, 1869. They weren't a town very long. On June 6, 1889, the Great Seattle Fire happened, destroying the entire central business district. This was started accidentally by an overturned glue pot and carpentry shop. The fire made its way to a nearby liquor store and it exploded. Wooden boardwalks also carried the flames across the street and ignited other blocks. Seattle's water supply wasn't sufficient to actually put the fire out. They didn't have many hydrants and this became a problem. Water pressure was too weak, things like that. Seattle at the time only had volunteer firemen, so this created another problem. Most people say they were competent, but they just didn't have what they needed to put the fire out. By the morning of June 7th, the fire had burned 25 city blocks. Seattle went on to play a major role in shipping and transportation for the Yukon Gold Rush. Seattle had been a major city for a very long time, but you know, it wasn't as popular and it wasn't as known as places like New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Francisco, Dallas, things like that, but it really got put on the map, at least on a global level. People finally knew what Seattle was and where it was because of a music scene, grunge. In the mid 80s, Washington, particularly in Seattle and nearby towns, blew up with this new music, which was kind of a punk alternative thing going on, and they called it grunge. Great music has always come out of Seattle, but when bands like Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Mother Love Bone, when those bands got on the scene, everybody knew about Seattle. Back in the day, it seemed like if you were a musician, you had to make your way in New York, Los Angeles, or in the United Kingdom, someplace like that. But Seattle, it's like these kids came out of there, start playing their music, and they were like, we don't need LA, we don't need New York. We got our own thing going on here. And it was huge. Seattle is no stranger to corruption and major crimes, or at least very interesting crimes. On September 24th, in 1969, 20 cops conducted a really odd bingo raid. 
That's right, there were underground bingo parlors in Seattle at one point. The raid went off without a hitch. Some housewives and employees of the bingo parlor were arrested for playing bingo and running bingo games, I guess. Soon after the raid, all charges were dropped as a web of police corruption unfolded. What happened was some of the cops took cardboard boxes jammed with financial records and names that provided a really detailed look into a web of crooked cops and corrupt local officials. The raid was the idea of an assistant chief named Tony Gustin. He planned the raid at Pike Place Market to help bring down a corrupt regime that had reigned over Seattle since the 1920s. In 19 1983, you had the Wami Massacre. The Wami was a gambling club. On February 18th, 1983, two gunmen broke in there, hogtied the 14 people in the building, shooting them and leaving them for dead. The only survivor was 62-year-old ex-Navy cook and car dealer Wei Chin. He managed to struggle out of his bonds and stumble into the street for help. That location has never been opened again. About a decade later, you had the Mia Zapata murder in 1993. I remember this when this one happened. It was uh, it was kind of upsetting. Mia Zapata was the lead singer of a Seattle punk band called The Gits. Around 2 a.m. on July 7th, 1993, Zapata left the Comet Tavern in the Capitol Hill area of Seattle. After leaving the tavern, she went a couple blocks away and visited a friend. She stayed briefly and then left to walk home. This was the last time she was ever seen alive. Zapata's body was discovered near the intersection of 24th Avenue South and South Washington Street around 3.30 a.m. This is in the Central District. She'd been beaten, attacked, and strangled. It is believed she encountered her attacker shortly after 2.15 a.m., and her body was not initially identified as she had no identification on her and they didn't know who she was. The medical examiner was the person that identified her. They were a fan of the band and knew exactly who she was. In the show Forensic Files, they revealed that she was strangled to death, but she'd been beaten so badly she probably would have died from internal injuries. This case went unsolved for a very long time, and and then DNA caught up with Jesus Mesquea. He was a Florida fisherman when he was arrested. At the time of her death, he was living not too far from where her body was found. He had a history of violence towards women and all kinds of other horrible things, but the DNA obviously sunk his boat. No pun intended. Mescao was eventually sentenced to 37 years. Of course, he appealed and they gave him 36 years. So he went to the big house in January of 2003. He died in Washington on January 21st, 2021 at the age of 66 years old. Mia Zapata is in the 27 Club. The 27 Club is a list of popular musicians, artists, and actors who died at the age of 27. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse, and D. Boone. There's a bunch of others. In 2010, Moxie Media was involved in a political scandal. During that year's state senate primary election, Moxie Media engaged in what's called astroturfing. This is when you spread a bunch of money around to little organizations that maybe you created to make it look like there's grassroots efforts behind a candidate or something like this. They did this for Nick Harper, who became a state senator. In an out-of-court settlement, the state fined Moxie Media $290,000. Nick Harper stated that he knew nothing about the scheme, but eventually resigned in 2013 due to rumors of an extramarital affair. In other well-documented crimes, which we won't get into because they've been overdone, the Green River Killer is from Seattle. He worked the SeaTac area when he was killing people. And of course, Mary Kay Letourneau in 1997 hooked up with one of her students while he was in the eighth grade. Eventually had a kid together. She did some time in prison. She just died recently. I think of ovarian cancer. In case you don't know, she went on to marry that student when she got out of prison and he was 18 and they had some other kids together. In 2000, the city of Seattle, not the metro area, had 563,000 residents. In the 2020 census, they had 769,000, putting them at number one in growth in 2020. The entire metro area of Seattle has just under 4 million residents, putting them as the 15th largest metro area in the United States. When you look at the demographics of Seattle, you have about 69% white about 8% are black or African American, and Hispanic or Latino is 6.6%. The Asian community is the second largest at almost 14%. 
Pew Research reports that the largest religious groupings in Seattle are Christians, 52%, followed by no religion is 37%, Hindu is 2%, Buddhist 2%, Jewish community is 1% of the population, as is the Muslim population. Seattle has a history of a boom and bust type thing, like so many other cities. Seattle has been on the upswing several times and then going into a little decline. The first boom was covering the early years and they got into the lumber industry and they rode that like a wild horse. Back during the lumber times, the road that is now known as Yesler Way won the nickname Skid Road, supposedly after the timber skidding down the hill to Henry Yesler's sawmill. Many believe this is the origin of the American phrase or name Skid Row. Logging was the first major industry, but by the late 19th century, the city had become a commercial and shipbuilding center as kind of like I'd said earlier a gateway to Alaska for the Klondike gold rush. Seattle eventually became a technology city in the 1980s and even today. Companies like Microsoft and Amazon were founded and established in Seattle. Washington Mutual was founded right after the Great Seattle Fire as well. These days it's just software, biotechnology, and internet companies that basically rule the economics of Seattle. Now like I said in the last video, this one gets a little tricky because people from Seattle will disagree with it. That's how it normally goes. The locals have their own idea what is the best worst neighborhoods. It always happens. That's why I go by the stats and their livability score. Probably the best neighborhood to live in Seattle is Hawthorne Hills. Hawthorne Hills has a livability score of 87, which is the highest in Seattle. Now there's more expensive neighborhoods, but that doesn't mean they're the best neighborhood. The crime rate here is 77% lower than Seattle's average, and the rental prices are 39% lower than Seattle's average. When it comes to middle of the road neighborhoods, there's a lot to choose from. One of the ones I like is Crown Hill. They have a livability score of 68. Their crime rate is 14% lower than the Seattle average. Their cost of living is only 2% higher than Seattle's average and the real estate prices are about 4% higher than Seattle's average. They say the median home value in Crown Hill is about 503,000, but realistically, if you find anything at 600,000, you're lucky. Probably the worst neighborhood is Rainier Beach. Now, I say worst, I mean that people are actually living in. If you go to some of the industrial areas, things like that, yeah, there's some even worse there, but the livability score in Rainier Beach is 49. That sucks. The total crime here is 102% higher than the US average. Compared to other places like Los Angeles, Detroit, I don't know, Chicago, that's not terrible, but it's not good. And what really sucks about this place, you're still hard pressed to find a home here that is under $600,000. It's like the home prices aren't paying attention to the really crappy crime stats. Now here's some numbers that a lot of people care about, but they're just the average stats you'd find in Seattle. Their crime rate is 104% higher than the national average. Their violent crime rate is 54% higher than the national average. And in Seattle, the whole city, you have a one in 20 chance of being the victim of a crime. Their cost of living is 56% higher than the national average. Housing is 124% higher than the national average and goods and service are about 30% higher. The typical home price here is about 800,000. And that's for a two, three bedroom house. Seattle's overall livability score is 65. The food. Now obviously Seattle's gonna have some great seafood. I've had a lot of it, they do. They have a lot of really great seafood places to eat. And if I started with one of them, I'd probably have to list 50 of them. They also have a lot of really good noodle places that you should probably check out. But there's two places I'm gonna tell you about that you have to visit in Seattle. The first is Free Lard Tamales. This place is great. I found it by accident. I was actually in a tattoo place and I was looking at tattoos, gonna get one, and I asked if there's any place good to eat around there. One of the girls in the place said, follow me. She walked me around the corner and there was free lard tamales. It's not even a restaurant. It's like a little window you go up to. You ask for some tamales, they give them to you and you eat them and they are great. You need to visit that one. It's on like Latana Avenue and Northeast 65th Street. It's in the Green Lake neighborhood. The second one is Dick's Drive-In. Dick's Drive-In is like one of those iconic places in Seattle. People have mentioned it in music and it's Bill Gates' favorite place to eat. I watched this really cool YouTube video about dicks and they had all this information how it's been around since God knows how long and all these different things their menu hardly ever changes but what stuck out to me was how 
he treated his employees. Their pay is great for a fast food place. Their benefits are outstanding. And one thing they did have, and I hope they still have it, is after six months of employment, college students get $22,000 towards their tuition, which is outstanding. What other company is going to do that, big or little? You know, it's a hamburger place. Good hamburger place. I think the burgers are great. There are a lot of things to do in Seattle, and it can be a little overwhelming if you're only there for a weekend and you're trying to see it all. You got the important ones like Pike Place Market. This is a popular spot, but it gets really busy. You'll find anything from vegetables, fruit, fish, all sorts of things. Most importantly, the original Starbucks is there. You gotta go there, stand in line, get some coffee, take a picture, whatever you gotta do. That's what everyone does when they go to Pike Place Market the first time. You also have the Museum of Flight. This one is very interesting, not just for airplane enthusiasts. You could spend a whole day here and not get bored. And of course, the king of all of them, you have the Space Needle at the Seattle Center. You go up 605 feet. Well, you don't go 605 feet. That's how tall the whole thing is. But you get to the top and it's like a 360 degree view of Elliott Bay and Seattle. And it's great. You got to do that at least one time when you visit Seattle. One thing I did the last time I was there was the Pop Culture Museum. That's totally worth visiting. And the Woodland Park Zoo. This is 92 acres and is home to many threatened and endangered species from around the globe, not just the United States. The woodland kind of makes me feel like it's just maybe things from Washington and Pacific Northwest. No, it's from everywhere. They got African elephants, Asian elephants, jaguars, snow leopards, grizzly bears, lemurs, a solar operated carousel. But if you go there, definitely book an animal experience tour. It's a lot of fun. When it comes to sports, Seattle is another great city for sports. You've got the Seattle Seahawks, which is an outstanding NFL team. In baseball, you have the Seattle Mariners. In soccer, you have the Seattle Sounders. And then in the women's basketball, the WNBA, you have the Seattle Storm. And most exciting out of all of this is this year, this coming year, this next season, the Seattle Kraken start playing, which is a new NHL hockey team. They used to have the Seattle Supersonics in the NBA, but they eventually moved to Oklahoma and changed their name to the Thunder. I think they should have kept the Sonics at least and just called themselves the Oklahoma Sonics because that's actually the home of Sonic drive through the restaurant. Would have been a nice little crossover there, you know? You also have the Seattle Mist. Okay, so do you remember the Lingerie Football League? Well, they've changed their name. Now the league is called Legends Football League. That, <laughs> now it's still women, which is great, and they're scantily clad, but... <laughs> I don't know how you go from the Laundry Football League to Legends Football. Legends tells me it's like a retired NFL players are starting their own little over 50 league or something like that. Not a bunch of girls playing football. I mean, these girls play hard football and some of them are really good. I'd say a lot of them are good. I've watched a few games. But yeah, how do you get from the Laundry Football League to Legends Football League? I don't understand it. There's a lot of famous people that come from Seattle, so I'm just going to give you some of the more famous ones. You got Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Both are from Seattle and both were founding members of Microsoft. Jimi Hendrix, the greatest guitarist of all time. Rain Wilson from The Office. Back in 2015, he had this other show called Backstrom. It was such a great show and it lasted one season. 13 episodes, that was it. It broke my heart. I was really getting into it when they killed that show. Speaking of killing it, Amanda Knox is from Seattle. She's the one, she was the exchange student in Italy that killed her roommate and she went to jail, then she got out and now she's mad at Matt Damon for some reason. Yeah, it's weird. So there you have Seattle. Seattle's a beautiful city. It has some problems like every city. You know, we had the George Floyd protests and that Chaz area, and there always seems to be a protest going on. They have out of control homelessness. Cost of living is up there, but it is a beautiful, successful American city that has given us a lot of great music, incredible inventions and companies. If you ever get a chance, visit Seattle. Not just that one day thing before you get on your cruise ship and go to Alaska. Go to Seattle spend some time there make sure you stay away from areas you shouldn't be in just like any city in any country in any state and enjoy seattle all right everyone i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave me a comment share my videos please give it a big thumbs up everybody have a great day be nice to each other